Hey guys, what's going on? It's Stokonic here, and today we're going to be going over the Looking for Mr. Right event. Alright guys, let's go ahead and jump into the event review. Level 1, Adventure of Our Own. You go up against three different opponents, General Blue, Zarbon, and Yamcha. Respectively, they drop 30,000 Zenny, 5,000 experience points, and anywhere between 0 to 140 small potential orbs. Zarbon is 12,000 Zenny, 30,000 character experience, and anywhere between 0 to 77 medium potential orbs. And Yamcha is 5,000 Zenny, 5,000 character experience, and anywhere between 0 to 10 large potential orbs. Upon clearing the entire map, you get 7,777 rank experience. You're guaranteed one Dragonstone upon first clear. You do not get Dragonstones after your first clear. You also get 7,777 Zenny per upon completing the stage. When you go into the event, you will have a choice of only three friends. That is the Genius Girl Summer Vacation Balma Youth, the physical one, the Tech Balma Bunny, and the Intelligence Rare Audacious Adventurer Balma. Now, of these three, you're probably going to want to take the Genius Girl Summer Vacation Balma because she gives agility and physical type key plus three. You do have a choice in the map. So either go up against the enemy, one of the enemies mentioned before, of Blue, Zarbon, or Yamcha, or taking a path to the right. If you choose to take the path to the right, you can go and get a, a couple different things. You can either get Zenny, you can get training items, or you can get Awakening Medals. So the path on the left is where the Zenny is, and you can get 150,000 Zenny per tile that you actually land on. If you go in the middle, it's just training items, and on the right, you get the Awakening Medals. On the right with the Awakening Medals, uh, if you land on a Bronze Awakening Medal, you get a 3 times Medal Drop. Now, back into the event, if you decide to go up against the boss, you go after you defeat the boss, uh, you get to choose a Left Path, Middle Path, and Right Path. The left gives small potential orbs, the middle gives medium potential orbs, and the right gives large. Uh, once you're finished with that and you gather the orbs, when right before you get to the actual end stage, there is a chance for you to encounter a Flying Nimbus. Now, the Flying Nimbus is guaranteed that you have to take it, you don't have a choice. And it's going to take you over to Master Roshi's Island. When you get over Master Roshi's Island, you're going to have a random chance of any of the orbs that you land on, or any of the tiles that you land on, to get uh, potential orbs in the system. When you defeat Roshi, there's going to be a chance that you can get the actual Branches of Fate Bulma Youth, that's the event card that we're playing for. In terms of mission rewards, you are rewarded at 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90%. You can get the actual reward for the branches of Fate Balma Youth. Upon 100% of completing Balma's potential system, you do get an Elder Kai. And for each path, potential path that you unlock in that Balma, you get another Balma card. So as soon as you get your second Balma card, you can go ahead and feed it into the dupe path. And every time you get another dupe path, it'll unlock another Balma. So you can unlock all of them really quickly. Um, the event also has different types of missions for clearing the event. Uh, one time gives you some Hercule statues, 20, uh, two times gives you 20 Popo medals, three times gives you 10 Bobbity medals, four times give you three North Kai medals, five times is a Supreme Kai medal, 10, 15, 20, at 25, and 30 times each gives you two of the Bulma Youth medals in order to Doken Awaken her. And last but not least, if you clear it 70 times, you get one more additional Elder Kai, a little bit more incentive for you to run the event. Now we're going to go ahead and get into why you want to run the event 70 times. Uh, this is for the 200 million event. This is a JP versus global battle. Um, now, this event period runs from July 27th at 2100 to July 31st at 3 a.m. Pacific time. So what's going on is the global version and the JP version are going to be battling for how many times each one can complete this event. The one who it gets is the winner gets a Vegeta and the loser gets a Yamcha. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into the card review of the Balma, the Vegeta, and the Yamcha. Branches of Fate, Balma Youth, Leader Skill, Tech, Key plus 1, HP, and Attack plus 25%. Super Attack, Rocket Launcher, causes Supreme Damage, Passive Skill, recovers 7,000 HP per Rainbow Orb obtained. Great chance of reducing the damage received by 40%. Link Skills are Battlefield Diva, Rival Duo, Brainiacs, The Incredible Adventure, Guidance of the Dragon Balls, and Scientist. Her max base stats are HP of 6140, attack of 5876, and defense of 3210. She has a 12 key multiplier of 120%, and the orbs required for you to get her potential system to the max is 6540 small, 3530 medium, and 346 large. When you fully max her out, her max stats are HP of 10140, attack of 9876, and defense of 7210. Now, before we go into her Doken Awakening, let's go ahead and talk about the cards that you can feed into. Now, as stated before, there's going to be a Flying Nimbus Cloud that can take you down to the Master Roshi Island, where you will have a chance to get another Bulma card drop. There are three cards that you could actually feed this into if you already got her to Super Attack 10 with all potential orbs unlocked. 
The first one that I'm going to talk about is the one that I highly recommend you using them on if you have her. It's a Genius Summer Vacation Balma Youth. She is the most viable of all of the Balma Youth cards outside of the free-to-play one that we're just receiving now. Uh, the next one is going to be Curiosity and Adventure Balma Youth that I would recommend only because even though she's not going to be a damage dealer, this is going to be the one you take in the World Tournament with your Broly because she gives a Strength Key Type plus 3, which is highly, highly useful. Last but not least, Seeking Thrill and Romance Balma Youth. You can feed that into her if you would choose to. She's not a great card whatsoever. She doesn't really have a good chance to stun or anything like that, but she does stun. Still not that viable. You're you would have a higher chance, in my opinion, of running a Genius Summer Vacation Ball with Youth over the other two cards that I had mentioned. Now, Back to the branches of Fate Balma Youth, Shidoken Awakens with five of her event medals, and Shidoken Awakens into Getting Butterflies Balma Youth. Her leader ability is Tech Key plus two, HP attack and defense plus 30%, so she's a little mini godly there. Super attack is Rocket Launcher, causes supreme damage to the enemy. Passive skill, recover 7,777 HP per rainbow orb obtained. Great chance of reducing the damage received by 50%. Now, I don't know what great chance actually is in terms of percentages, but she's going to be a tanker. Link skills are Battlefield Diva, Rival Duo, Brainiacs, The Incredible Adventure, Guidance of the Dragon Ball, Scientist, and Shattering the Limit. Her max stats, base stats, are HP of 6630, Attack of 6146, and Defense of 3565. Um, she has a 12 key multiplier of 125%, and her max total potential orb stats are HP of 10630, attack of 10146, and defense of 7565. Now, overall, she is not an amazing unit. She's going to be a little bit more of a tanker. That's what you're going to want to use her for. But specifically, if and when we get the agility Frieza event on the global side, and if you're already on the JP side, if you're already going up against it, this bomb is going to be coming pretty handy because she is a really good tanker. She's going to take hits, and you're going to be able to go up against the LR Agility Frieza event a little bit more ease if you want to run her. I'm not saying she's going to be an optimal unit for a team, but she will be a better unit if you haven't grinded out all the tech strike events. Plus, she's going to probably hit a little bit harder only because you're going to she has her own dupe system path, uh, her own potential orbs, and you're actually going to utilize them with her. So let's go ahead and talk about Vegeta. Solitary Warrior Vegeta. Leader skill, all types, key plus 2, HP attack, and defense plus 2,000. Super attack, Galakon, causes supreme damage to the opponent. Passive skill, Trick of Fate, key plus 3, a great chance of attack plus 77%. Link skills are Saiyan Warrior Race, Prodigies, Royal Lineage, over 9,000, and Saiyan Pride. His max stats are HP of 6274, attack of 6865, and defense of 3073. Now, there's no winner chosen at this time. Well, the winner gets this card as their prize if for however many times we run the event on the global slash JP side. He's a 12 key multiplier of 130%, and overall, he is kind of a better card. Now, before I go into the option of the card, I do want to state both of these cards have the same exact stats. The only differences are their link skills. And the reason why I say the Vegeta is a little bit of a better card is because he has more relevant link skills with Saiyan Warrior Race, Prodigies, Royal Lineage, and Saiyan Pride. Now, those are all more, more so Vegeta links, but they are useful and he can be run um, with other Vegetas if you're lacking characters. So let's go ahead and talk about the Yamcha, Optimistic Warrior Yamcha. He has the same exact leader skill as Vegeta. His super attack is Wolf Fang Fist, causes supreme damage to the opponent. Passive skill, Simple Twist of Fate, Key plus 3, great chance of attack plus 77%. Link skills are Z Fighters, Turtle School, Speedy Retribution, Infighter, and Rival Duo. And he has the same stats as Vegeta in terms of his max potential stats. 12 key multiplier of 130%. So overall, uh, they are the same exact card. They just have different names for their supers and passives. His link skills are definitely, the Yamcha's link skills are definitely less. I mean, Z Fighters, Turtle School, Speedy Retribution, Infighter, and Rival Duo, none of them are really that relevant on a team. I guess you could run it on a team just to have fun if you're running a Z Fighters team. Uh, outside of that, it's really not that useful. You can, however, increase his super attack, which he does have over the Vegeta. Though the Vegeta card technically does have a semi-farmable super attack because you can use any Vegeta that drops from summons to feed into him. The Yamcha can actually be have his super attack raised up from the Captain Yamcha's Grand Slam event. The card that drops from that is the Go Ahead Home Run Yamcha, and this card can actually feed into him for a super attack up a 50% chance until you Z Awaken him, then it's a 100% chance. So overall, um, the event's just more for fun. None of these cards, except for maybe the Balma on the LR Frieza event, none of them are really that viable for use. But it is a fun event to run, so go ahead, run it. You do get some cool prizes if you complete it 70 times. I mean, two Elder Kai's are definitely a good commodity right there. Um, and as for a free-to-play card, it's not really horrible. She's definitely meant to be a tanker. But overall, guys, that is the event review. I hope that was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. I'll catch you guys later.